the simplest game you could think of. Simplest game you could think of. One spot, two paddles, and a score. No one was a dreamer. An entrepreneur, extrovert. It was a dream I had, and uh, I always felt that it was going to win. I just didn't realize it was going to win quite so quickly. Absolutely, we changed the world. If we did nothing else, we changed the world. <laughs> I was the youngest Silicon Valley president. I sort of plowed the field to make it easier for Jobs and Gates and those guys to plant. <laughs> okay, yeah. My family was always a game player, from Clue to Monopoly to chess, and I learned chess very, very early on. The epiphany for me was my third grade teacher gave me the responsibility to teach electricity to the class. And I got to play with the magic box that was locked in the closet. And it had dry cells and wires and Ooh, switches and lights. lights. And so I started tinkering and never stopped. No one came up with this thing. He says, how come on a TV set, when you change the vertical hold, the picture goes up, and you turn it the other way, and the picture goes down? He says, can we do that horizontally, too? I said, well, we could do it digitally. So that's when I invented the, the motion circuitry. So no one asked Al to use that motion circuitry of mine. Al is a better engineer than I am, you know, by far. And yeah, get that I, on tape now. Put that down. <laughs> the day that Al was to show up, I heard about this thing from Magnavox. I had competition, and I was scared. And so I went up to Burlingame, and they had two or three Magnavox Odysseys set up. And I looked at it, and it was fuzzy and, and, and didn't have sound, didn't have score. But I looked around, and people were kind of having fun with it. Odyssey. It's new from Magnavox. I had to tell Al what I wanted him to do. And I thought a good training program would be this ping pong game. And so to put a little bit of spice into it, I told him I had a deal with General Electric, which was totally Bupkis. You lied to me, Nolan. <laughs> <laughs> I lied to you. But he kept criticizing, it's got to have a score, it's got to, you know. And So I made it playable. I didn't know it was a throwaway. And I, we made put the speed up and all this other little angles and worked on it. And we found ourselves playing it after work for hours. We were playing it and everything and really good. And Nolan said, oh, no, we want a driving game. And <laughs> Al and I said, no, this game is much too much fun. We decided we were going to test it. So we got Ted Dabney built a box over a cabinet over the weekend. You know, would... contact paper over oh, plywood. Yeah. I mean, he was... had. The orange paint was whatever he had, I think. And I <laughs> went to the Walgreens uh, drugstore and bought a $75 Hitachi TV set and turned it into a monitor. So here we are, so Nolan. So here we are. Wow, it's changed a lot. A lot. When we put the Pong in here, it was just on the other side of this green pillar, on a barrel. And remember, this place was a different kind of place. Well, peanuts on the peanuts floor. Peanuts on the floor, and some of the barrels were for peanuts, unshelled right, peanuts. Right. This game had never been seen in the wild before. There were no instructions. There was nothing like it. And so I was just dying to see how people would adapt to it, how quickly. And boom, they started having fun with it really quick. All of a sudden, Al gets this call saying, hey, the machine's broken. So Al runs, runs down there to find out what's going on. I remember I got the call uh, that uh, stopped working. Turned out the coin mechanism had filled up so high it was jammed. <laughs> jammed with too many coins. <laughs> so I opened up the coin mech and just <laughs> the quarters came out and I filled my pockets and then I called you up and said, hey Nolan, I think we have a good sign here. That was a, that was a tricky shot. <laughs> Not. Ooh, 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 almost got that corner. One sure way to win. Uh, well, yeah, that's it. That's it. The paddle doesn't go up all the way. 
Now that was a feature. Yeah, how was that your fault? Oops. It was yeah. It was a, it was a bug. It was a bug in the circuit that I was going to get back to and fix later. And then we realized that if we didn't have that, two good players could play forever. So hence my expression, if you can't fix it, call it a feature. Home gaming was important because it allowed a much broader dissemination of electronic game playing uh, into the population. We tried to sell the consumer pong at the toy fair oh, in New York. Oh, we sold God. none. And, yeah. and we said, what's wrong with this? Yeah, I mean, here we were at the toy fair with a product that would, in fact, become the hit product of the decade. So we cold called the Sears Tower and got through to Tom Quinn, the buyer in sporting goods, that was trying to sell the Magnavox Odyssey game. Two days later, he's on our doorstep at 8 o'clock in the morning. That was such a stroke of luck. Quinn says, how many can you make oh, by God. Christmas? And I said, 75,000. <laughs> and then he came back with an order for 150,000. Right. I said, we can't possibly build this many because we just don't have the capital. He says, oh, let me introduce you to Sears Bank. Yeah. Pong was the one that got everybody's attention. We created the video game industry because we made the first commercially viable video game. And then from then on, everybody, you know, moved on from there. Games are part of the DNA of most people, whether it be smartphones, Oculus Rift. I think it's all going to be blended into this interactive slurry of fun. The ability to play anywhere, play anything, is bound to be a continuing saga of the world.